Try this again. Oh, Lord have mercy. We're going to try this again. Shalom, shalom. Most high in Christ bless. We're going to do this again. I'm going to give a few more minutes before some more people can get on. Slum, slum. We're going to try this again. Lord Jesus. Hear me. How's the, uh, oh, here we go again. How's the, um, the feed? Audio, video, is it good? Good, good. All right, we're gonna try it again though. Please bear with me. Facebook's up to his tricks again. I'm trying to make it through this class. All praises. Um, I'm also Officer Kabar, I always see like And um, as you see, the devil's always busy. Okay, all right. Oh, I need a scribe. I need a scribe. I need a brother to scribe. Skip his choppy. I know it completely froze. It froze me too. Last time. I need a brother to scribe. Brother um, Jabez. All right, all praise. You gonna scribe? <laughs> Who's gonna scry? Is it Brother Jerez? Now, now everybody wants to scry. To say, um, to Brother Jerez, just let me know if you scribe and say yes. Just type yes or why. Choppy, still choppy. Well, it's the best if you're going to scribe, type Y. Oh, yes.
All right, all praises, all praises. All right, topic of the class is there's power in congregating. There's power in congregating. That's the topic of the class. Here we go again. I'm seeing that some saying it's freaking out. Some saying it's good. I see it freezing up again. All right, I'm just, I'm just gonna go it's to his class. Lord have mercy on me. Damn the devil. Anyway, um, power in congregating. There's power in congregating. Um, I just got back from Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, and it was great. Absolutely great. Um, being around the brothers and sisters is always good. Um, Phoenix, there's always... They always give good hospitality. Uh, but yes, so let's go to Zephaniah two and one. This Zephaniah two and one. I already did the disclaimer. Uh, this is the second try of doing this class. Yeah, th th thank you. Thank you, Senor Pablo. Thank you. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Already did the disclaimer. I appreciate y'all. Oh, it was already done. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Or did brothers, 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 I'm late. <laughs> Prayer. Oh, I appreciate y'all. Y'all, y'all something else though. Um, <laughs> Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourself together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. So we as Israelites, we must gather together. And it's no wonder why the Most High has it as a commandment. He has it as a commandment. This is a commandment. Gather yourselves together, O nation not desired. Hmm. Gather yourselves together. All right. Um, let's go to Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. Levit Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. We already have a scribe. That's uh, Brother Jabez. Leviticus 23 and 1. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. A holy convocation is a holy gathering. Holy convocation is a holy gathering. And now... Hmm. So, those that want to be by themselves, they are breaking the commandments. You can't say, well, I'm keeping the commandments and not congregate. That's a commandment from the Lord. A holy convocation is a holy gathering. You can have a convocation by yourself. You can't have a convocation, a holy gathering, by yourself. For you lonely lights, those that don't want to gather, congregate with their people, you're breaking the commandment. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. And the Lord says it again. He says it again. Congregate. Holy gathering. Hold on. You can have a, a gathering with one person or even two. Uh, go to Hebrews 10 and 24. Hebrews 10 and 24. Hebrews 10 and 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. What is love? Keeping the commandments. That's love according to the scriptures. And what's the good works? Keeping the commandments. You know, there's no way around getting around the scriptures, around the commandments. Commandments. Lord gave us command meant not requests. He doesn't ask us to do anything. He tells us, command us. I'll read the, uh, verse 24 again. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another also, much more today, the much more as we see the day approaching. So we have to exhort one another, especially in these last evil days. And how do you exhort through the scriptures? Asking your brother and sister, how you doing? Good to see you. It's good to be an Israelite today. All, all praises. The Lord still had mercy on me. He had mercy on us. Hmm. Oh, thank the Lord for his mercies. Verse 25 again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. It's almost, almost could be a thousand years. 
almost the day of Christ returning. I'm glad I'm, I'm saying almost, and a, it could be a thousand years. Um, hold on, hold on. Second Peter three and eight. Second Peter three and eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. You know, um, it may seem like a long time, but to the Lord, it's like that. He doesn't uh, see time operate on the same um, concept of time as we do. It says a day, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. So we must endure. We must endure. So what are, how do we endure? One, gathering together. Congregating, congregating. That's one. That's one way. Because it's a commandment for us to congregate. Oh, where's that scripture? Hold on. Hold on. Bear with me. This uh, is Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. Anybody knows that scripture? Has? Two are better. Ecclesiastes four and nine. Ecclesiastes four and nine. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Two are better than one, <clears throat> because they have a good, re good reward for their labor. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. So even the scriptures, it tells us two are better than one. Gathering a cell together. Verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. So if you you are by yourself, you know, you don't have a brother or sister for the sisters to help you up when you fall. Let's say you fall in its truth. You make a mistake. Who's gonna help you up if you're by yourself? Who's going to help you up if you're by yourself? Uh, verse 11. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? If one prevail against another, against him, two will, two shall withstand him. And threefold cord is not quickly broken. So if you're by yourself and you have um, two or more people come against you, 
What's your defense? What is your defense? So let's let us not get in this um train this thought that I could do it by myself. You know, Christ had 12 disciples. He had 12 disciples. Yeah, one was the devil, but the point is he had 12. You cannot do this. Go through this walk by yourself. It's impossible. We must gather together, O nation not desired. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse 9. Matthew 24 and verse 9. Then shall ye that shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. He shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I'll read it again. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. All nations, including your own. including some of your own. So you shall be hated of all nations. Hated. Not loved. This is hated of all nations. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Hmm. So in... This truth, we will be hated. We will be hated of all nations. And some will be offended by the scriptures, by the commandments, because you're teaching, living, keeping the commandments, you will be hated. Don't get it twisted. Some of us lose, um, all thought of consciousness consciousness of who they are uh, I'm, 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 I'm I'm gonna give a jab in to Christianity because Christianity is like blinders on your eyes. Christianity is blinders on your eyes. You know, there's um, often talk about this movie. The title is They Live. It was, it was made back in the 90s, I think. And there was a guy, Roddy Piper. I think it was, yeah, Roddy Piper. Piper. He, was, he used to be a wrestler. But he was like this, um, he was looking for work and he came across these people and they had shades, sunglasses. And when you put these sunglasses on, you see the reality that's going on around you. Hmm. Those sunglasses are the scriptures. And he comes across a Jake. He's got the brother's name, the actor's name. But he has a deep voice. I, I see his face, but I've got his name. Anyway, he tries to tell, pulls the 
Jake into an alley and says, you got to see this. And what happens? Jake don't, doesn't want to see it. Get, get off of me. So they, they get into a fight. They get into a fight. And at the end of the fight, end of the fight, uh, the Jake finally puts the glasses on. Uh, I'm not sure if he forces them on, but anyway, the point is he finally puts the glasses on and he's like, oh my goodness. He starts to see what's really going on. Ah, He's, he puts the shades on and see what's going on. Hmm. So the shades are this truth. Is the truth? Are the scriptures? Yeah, a lot of um, messages in there. If you watch it with your spiritual eyes, and don't just watch it like you do a regular uh, movie, but watch it with spiritual eyes, you see. He looks up, he sees the billboards. And it's the dollar bill, money, represents money, and it says, worship me. It says, um, it's another billboard with a girl in a bikini, and it says uh, something else. The point is, is that this truth shines the light, makes you see what's really going on. There's a statement um, that's, ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sis. Yes, yes. Keith David, that's the brother's name. Thank you, thank you. 1988. Wow. Okay. But nevertheless, good movie. Very good movie. The point is to gather together, congregate, be around your people that are keeping the commandments. That's the point. So you have brothers and sisters of like mind. They see what's out in the world. There's nothing out there for us. But when you're around your people, keeping the commandments and joyfulness and gladness of heart, think about the power in that. Think about the power in that. Because you can't share this happiness with the heathen. Uh, you can't share this happiness with the heathen. They're your enemies. The heathen are your enemies. So, in the midst of congregating, you have joyfulness and happiness of heart. Um, comes, well, also what comes out is counseling and correction. Uh, give me Psalms 133. Psalms 133 and 1. Psalms 133 and 1. Psalms 133 and 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. 
Um, I remember Captain Yasra saying this in one of his classes. When you dwell together in unity, guess what? There's some correction going to come out. Correction going to come out. There's no way around it. If you love your brother and sister, it's going to be correction. Um, hold on a minute. Something just popped in my head. Ah, here it is. Oh, we're coming back here. Go to Proverbs 5 and 12. Proverbs 5 and 12. Um, there's no way to congregate in the scriptures and his truth without correction coming out. That's the good and pleasant thing. Hmm. Proverbs 5 and 12. And say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Some some of us don't want to be corrected, but if you're gathering with your brothers and sisters, I'm I'm, I'm taking from the brothers' point of view. Correction is going to come out, and in that correction. It's not going to feel good. The, the most high is not concerned about our feelings. He told us what to do. He gave us the instructions. And so your brothers that love you are going to give you those instructions, that correction. Hmm. Um, verse 13 again, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. Verse 14, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Uh, if you notice the words here, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. What comes with a correction? Instruction. The scriptures comes out. And whenever mighty men are around, your teachers are around, guess what? They're gonna give you those instructions. Back to Psalms 133 and 1. Psalms 133 and 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that, run, that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. And as the dew of her uh, Hermon, and as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Wow. Uh, verse 3 again. And as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Wow. All right.
um, question. Who caught it? Who caught it? You caught that, uh, let's see. brother from India. Wow. All oh, praise. Shalom, brother. Most high praise bless you. Uh, <clears throat> mm, 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 mm. Um, there's there is there is life in congregating. Wow, wow, wow! He gave the commandments. Um, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. He gave commandments so we can live. Mm -hmm. the, the Lord commanded that a blessing. Um, I, I think I understand what you mean. But yes. Uh, I'll read verse 3 again. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descendeth upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Wow. Um, so it's a blessing, commandment, and you keep it, you get everlasting life. Everlasting life. Um, let's say, let's go to Psalms 141 and verse, is that it? No, that's not what I want. Hold on a minute. Oh, Psalms 141, verse 4. Verse 5, I'm sorry, verse 5. Psalms 141, verse 5. That's what I want. Psalms 141, verse That's a big lag here. Wow. Um, Psalms 141, verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Let the righteous smite me. 
it is it shall be a kindness hold on right there so let the righteous smite me let them correct me there shall be a kindness mm. hold this hold this go to leviticus 19 and shall uh, 17 um, Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. What does that mean? If you don't correct your brother, that's because you hate him. But if you correct your brother, that's how you love him. It's counter to what we're being taught in society in the christian church you can't judge me oh yes i can if i love you i'm gonna judge you yes so just think about this for those christians modern day christians that go to church, first of all, on Sunday, that is wrong as two left feet. So you miss a sin already by going to church on Sunday. And what happens at church? Singing and dancing, all that foolishness and being lied to. Is any correction coming out? You know, there's a video. I don't know, I don't know if y'all saw it, but <laughs> this pastor was going in on this transformer. Y'all don't know what I mean by transformer, transvestite, or whatever, transsexual, or whatever they are. Anyway, it's transformer. Meanwhile, and you know, brother, brothers, sisters, brother, clapping and all that. Behind him are women with pants on. Oh. So he's going in on this transformer. I ain't going to have nobody, a uh, uh, man wearing women's clothes. You got women wearing man's clothes. Right behind you. I think it was singing in the choir or something, whatever. It was total madness. Total madness. So what about the sisters wearing pants? Uh, what about them? Dressing out of order. What do you what do you call that? Um, cross dressing. Cross dressing. Hmm. The madness of Christianity. But in its truth, the truth. Or the commandments, the scriptures. And out of the scriptures will get corrected. That's love. And I'm going back to Psalms 133 and 3. Hmm. 
Out of commandments comes everlasting life, the blessings from the Lord. Yeah, that, yeah, he's a hypocrite. The church is full of hypocrites. Oh, thank the Lord that he brought me out of that madness. Thank the Lord. We should all thank the Lord for that. Because um, you don't get correction according to the scriptures in, Christ in the Christian church, in Christianity. And if they happen, the pastor I'm talking about, go on correcting someone or our people in the midst of sin, mm. they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites. So the fact that the Lord showed mercy on us. Let's see, I had a conversation with a, a brother in, while I was in Phoenix, and he described his um, his life before he came in truth. And I said, he said, just, you know, what you got, officer? What you got? You know, he wanted, he wanted some scriptures. I'm not giving, I'm not going to deep things. I'm not going to give him get deep things. But he described what he'd been through in his life and shot um, multiple times. Um, all these horrific things that happened to him. And I, and I said, hmm, this is all the Lord's mercy. Why are you still here? His mercy, have mercy on you. Um, Lamentations 3 and 22. Lamentations 3 and 22. Yeah, I know. Um, Lam Lamentations 3, 22. Is, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. I'm going to read that again. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, but because his compassions fail not. Well, the only reason why we're here because of his mercies. We all deserve death. So we wake up in the morning, praise and thank the Lord for his mercies. Thank you, Lord, for not killing me. Hmm. Um, I'm going to read again. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Since his compassions are new every morning. Hmm. Because he could have taken us out. He could have killed us. Um, a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, uh, engine from a plane exploded, caught fire, and pieces of that plane of the engine fell. Think about this. They fell, they fell into a house, um, they fell in neighborhoods, right? What if 
We're sitting in our house. Oh, no, no. Just walking the street, out in the yard. And one of those pieces of the engine fell on us. Hmm. Think about that. Think about that. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Verse 24, the Lord is my portion, save my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. 25, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. Mm. That's mercy, 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 mercy. And why am I going here? Um, because those that seek the Lord, those that wait for the Lord, put their trust in him, the Lord will have mercy on those. Those that keep the commandments, he's going to have mercy on them. I uh, hope um I hope it's getting getting across. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mm. Oh, uh mm. Let's go to Exodus 20 And five. Exodus twenty and five. This this is concerning idols. Idols, right? Th thou shalt not bow down themself thyself to them, nor serve them. For the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visit, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So the Lord will have mercy on those that love him and keep his commandments. Congregating is a commandment. And as we congregate, especially on the Sabbath, 